dear friends <clears throat> in the morning we discussed the human rights of aliens i think that you have known the definition by now that aliens are the citizens or the denizens or persons belonging to some other state not our state that means some other country and of course they do not have they do not enjoy full protection of life and liberties but constitutionally their fundamental rights have to be protected because uh, our fundamental rights envisaged in uh, <coughs> part 3 of the constitution they are applicable to every person on the earth right so please remember aliens are the persons belonging to other country of course we do not have any dispute with them but the problem is with the problem is with the alien enemies or enemy aliens enemy aliens enemy aliens are the citizens or denizens belonging to a country which is not in good terms with the host country suppose india and pakistan so pakistan definitely it is in rogue country or enemy country with us therefore the pakistanis definitely they are enemy aliens we must be careful them and uh, all the human rights uh, will uh, 100% they will not apply to them there are restrictions the main restriction is normally when a person is declared as an uh, enemy alien normally he will be expelled he will be ejected he will be driven out from the country at the time the law says that uh, they have to be given the uh that is uh, they have to be uh, given the uh, possibility of their explanation yes they can explain and then arbitrarily they should not be dispossessed from the place and they should not be evicted and you have to follow the so called uh, principles of natural justice one cannot be ordered uh, arbitrarily they <coughs> driven out from the place there should be the decision should be taken in accordance with the law and a chance should be given to him to have his case reviewed by competent authority and he can employ an advocate also in this regard so we discussed a few cases but the correct case now the point is persons belonging to foreign country they are aliens right so regarding aliens enemy aliens we discussed a lot of cases regarding aliens uh, i found a beautiful case we also discussed in the law talks this case you all know so chairman railway board and others versus chandramadas 2000 so this happened in the <coughs> rahura railway station you all know well but anyway it's my duty to inform you the details of the case and once you go through the judgment uh, then normally nirbhaya case is also not comparable with this such a uh, bad case it is right so <clears throat> you may be knowing chandramadas she is a practicing advocate in kolkata high court and she filed a writ petition under article 226 uh, before the honorable high court of uh, kolkata for giving compensation to the victim who is a bangladeshi woman at the time the names were revealed nowadays uh, we should not reveal the name now let us go into the details of the case what happened so the victim's name is hanifa khan hanufa khan actually she is uh, an elected representative in bangladesh right and now from here onwards i will not uh, uh, i will not utter her name because uh, it's a sensitive issue right this bangladesh woman she came to kolkata on 24th of february 1998 so with the intention of uh, visiting the azmer sharif darga which is a very sacred religious fair for muslims and is located in rajasthan right she booked a ticket in jodhpur express on uh, <coughs> 26/2/1998 she came to kolkata on 24th itself she stayed there and on 26th uh, Um, of course at about 2 pm she came to the railway station early actually jodhpur express is at 11 o'clock in the night the reason for her coming early is she could not uh, get a confirmed ticket her ticket is only in the waiting list i'm sorry 
So it's only in the waiting list. So she wanted to get it confirmed. She came to the railway station. She approached a TTE and requested for the confirmation of the ticket. And he said, Madam, you go and wait in the uh, that ladies waiting room. The consent ticket ticket collector will come. And of course, uh, your chance, uh, you may be lucky enough if you get the ticket like that he told. And uh, she has gone to the retire ladies waiting room and uh, she was there. So the touts, the brokers, the ticket brokers, all these fellows, uh, definitely they will be hovering uh, around the platform of the railway stations. This Ashok Singh, a tout and his friend Sachem Singh and uh, Sachinder Singh. So he is a broker, tout and broker took advantage of the situation. They approached her, they told her, yes, we can get your ticket confirmed. They took the ticket from her, visited some, uh, um, some other platform. Ultimately, after one hour, maybe around 4 p.m. or so, they came back and said that, yes, madam, your ticket is confirmed in uh, uh, bogey number S3 and ticket birth number is 17. She was happy. At about 5 p.m., these people once again, of course, uh, they have discussed about uh, uh, four people have committed the offence, right? So, and at 5 p.m., then uh, they asked her, yes, are you safe? Yes, I will take rest here by about, uh, I have to have my dinner around 9 p.m. or so, she told them, right? Even the women attendants in the ladies' waiting room, they are uh, chit-chatting with the fellows, Ashok Singh, because all these fellows are uh, known to them, right? So they came to her around 9 p.m. So along with a boy, Kashi. So this boy, then Ashok Singh asked her uh, whether she is uh, willing to take any food because uh, she could not get food in the train. It was she scheduled to leave at 11 o'clock. Yes, she said, yes, better to take uh, dinner. Then uh, this boy, Kashi, he took her to a nearby eating uh, place or restaurant where she took the meals but uh, she vomited, she, the meals was not that good, she vomited. Once again she came back and uh, she was in the waiting room. Now these people have taken advantage. Once again these people approached her and asked her to stay in the retiring room up to 11 o'clock because she is not feeling well. Of course, she scented, she suspected them but uh, since they were speaking very fair, Casually with the employee, ladies in the waiting room and others, uh, the attendants, all these things. Uh, okay, she said uh, uh, she wanted to take rest in the retiring room. So unnecessarily, as a scapegoat, she followed these people. She was taken to room number 108 of uh, Yatri Nivas, which is in the first floor of the Howrah railway station. Right, but there were three more persons. That four persons in total were present. And uh, when she was uh, reaching room number 108, uh, she was forcibly driven into the retiring room and uh, some fellow, uh, his Avata Avad Singh or somebody, he was, uh, he has locked, he has bolted the door from outside and he kept guard over the same. Suppose if somebody comes, uh, he will alert them. These four fellows, uh, they took drinks inside the room and uh, I think uh, I don't tell anything. She was uh, ravished literally, but she resisted them somehow due to she applied pressure and came out uh, after about all the four people committed rape on her. She came out screaming. Right, she came out on the platform. At the time, one Sachidev Singh, another fellow, of course, he was also having links with Ashok Singh Narsa. So. Uh, he saw her and uh, he took, uh, he showed uh, pity on her. And at that time, Ashok Singh was also on the platform. She informed uh, this fellow as to what happened immediately. This Sachyendra Singh, uh, I will tell you, Siram Singh. This Siram Singh pretended to, who pretended to be her savior. Then he slapped that fellow Ashok Singh. Why you are doing such wrong things you should not do? Then by the time the train left the way, 11 o'clock is over, then uh, where she has to stay, she doesn't know. This fellow pretended like a good Samaritan and he told her that, uh, uh, Madam, you please come to my house. My wife and children are there. You can stay for the night in my house and tomorrow in the morning, I will see that you go in that uh, Purva Express or something, he told. 
so another bakra she believed him and she was talking his uh, to his friends rented flat where he and the friend uh, both of them started uh, sexually assaulting her but now and uh, when she raised cries uh, they have gagged her mouth uh, due to which uh, actually lot of bleeding was also there but this was heard by the landlord and immediately he called the police and the police took these people into custody and uh, a case in crime number 19 by 98 uh, in uh, gpr that is uh, government railway police station was also registered and the people were uh, of course they were uh, taken legally to trial it's one part now chandriya madas taking the situation so she filed a public interest litigation under article 226 of the constitution of india now the honorable high court of kolkata awarded 10 lakhs compensation to be paid to the victim who has already left to bangladesh of course in this case chandrababu has made the deputy high commissioner of bangladesh as one of the parties right so and with the high court order 10 lakhs compensation now the matter went in appeal to the supreme court here our important point of appeal and other things they will come now from here you have to be a little bit cautious right so railways say that it is an act of the individuals no doubt they are the employees but the individual they have acted even though they are on duty they have acted in their individual capacity we did not take the, tell them to take the, her to the hotel or a room and uh, commit some atrocious act on her so they are individual liable she can get compensation from them with the private law that is law of torts but not public law and secondly who is chandramadas in what way she is connected she is a practicing advocate in kolkata in what way she is she is not in any connected with this so she has no locus standi and vicarious liability cannot be applied to the railways uh, even though they are the employees so these things uh, they wanted to play in the defense role but now the honorable supreme court held that any person any public spirited person can file a public interest litigation so that is what justice p n bhagavati said and there is no locus standi yes chandrima das is 100% correct to file the petition finish second oh, a lot of discussions have taken place regarding that uh, vijayavati <coughs> state of rajasthan vijayavati versus state of rajasthan versus vijayavati kasturi lal case all these cases have been discussed and also some foreign cases also discussed ultimately said that uh, railways being a commercial company and since these fellows uh, are working with the company they are vicariously held liable to pay the compensation and they can recover the compensation from the salaries of these persons yes vicarious liability is there finish now let us come to our topic right aliens aliens are the persons belonging to other country and article 14 and particular let us go to udhr so the international covenants we have to take into consideration because article 51 of the constitution of india says we have to respect the international covenants so article 3 of the international that is udhr 1948 says article 3 article 3 what does it say i will tell you later Oh, they have discussed about uh, Article Three, I believe. Yes. Uh, okay. Anyway, so Article Six says uh, she protested and uh, asked to pay ten lakhs. Uh, lawyer. Article Three. Yes. Women are yes. <coughs> Women are okay entitled to protection of the human rights. Article Three. More than that, uh, Article Two of our SEDA is more important. No discrimination or no violence against uh, women. That is what uh, Article Two of SEDA says. And uh, Article Seven of the UDHR, Article Seven, all are equal before law. For that matter, Article Fourteen says yes, everybody is equal before law. And uh, therefore, taking the conglomerating all these things, that is Article Seven <coughs> and Article Three. of the udhr as well as article 2 of the seda 
and so many things international covenants icctr all these things they discussed so ultimately they said that uh, the fundamental rights right to protection and uh, right to protection applies to even the aliens also secondly what is rape rape is against to the integrity of the person so violation of article 21 of the constitution of india definitely they should be punished and uh, the compensation should be paid by the railways uh, and uh, therefore the writ petition was allowed this is a beautiful case which happened in the year 1998 itself see how bad things are going on but anyway here the main point you have to learn is even though she is an alien she even though she belongs to bangladesh yes her fundamental right of protection her fundamental human right of protection equality before law they exist so this is what i want to tell you so please read the case law once again it has come so in the law of torts of course we did not discuss so much uh, uh, elaborately now we have elaborately come in this because uh, actually tears are dropping will drop down from your eyes uh, seeing the pathetic condition two times she was subjected to sexual assault by the village during the year 1998 itself nowadays we are seeing but uh, previously also things did happen anyway this is a pathetic story but of course the pillows were punished and uh, the government the railways were made the eastern railways were made to pay compensation to the victim and uh, the amount was sent to the victim through deputy high commissioner of bangladesh so this is a good case for regarding alien thank you very much